Hello, my name is Kylie Fawcett. I'm a senior here at Bridgeport Regional Aquaculture Science and Technology Education Center. Ever since I was little, I have loved the science. I decided to come to this school because science has the most hands-on learning program they have, especially here at Aqua, where you have chances to go out on boats or to work with instruments such as these. Today, I'm going to instruct you on how to use a Buck Scientific GC, or gas chromatograph. So today we are going to be running a dilution of mouthwash through the GC to test how much alcohol there is. First step is to turn on the GC. The switch is located on the side of the instrument in the back. The program we will be using today is called Peak Simple. It's located on the desktop, over to the side, and a red and gray box. When opened, it looks like this. To draw out the sample, we will be using a 10 microliter syringe. A sample was prepared of a dilution of one to, uh, to four alcohol uh, mouthwash to water. You put the syringe in, careful not to let the syringe touch the bottom because that can bend the delicate um, needle. And you draw in two to three microliters of solution. It's important to make sure you draw no air bubbles in this, into the syringe. The syringe will be injected into the port right here. You have to be careful to go in straight and not bend the needle. The best way is to hold it from the tip and keep a firm hold on the needle while putting it in. Once it's firmly in the instrument, you can eject. The next step is to start the run. This is done by hitting the space bar and then zeroing each instrument, or in each scanner. You push the zero button in between the two magnifying glasses on each one. The scan will start running and typically run from 15 to 20 minutes to make sure everything has gone through. In the meantime, it's important to wash out the syringe. To wash out the syringe, we'll be using dichloromethane. You simply take the syringe, put it into the test tube, and draw and eject a few times. Then you take the plunger out of the syringe and leave it back in the box to dry. When you look at the scans and each one has returned to the baseline, you can stop the instrument. You go to acquisition, and stop. The scan is complete. Not on this one, but occasionally you'll get long, broad peaks. It's kind of confusing what this means. However, luckily, we have John Meller here, a production manager of Buck Scientific. Hello. Hi, John. Thank you for being here. So what does it mean exactly when we get long, broad peaks in a scan? Uh, generally, that means that you've overloaded the column. Uh, in this case, the peak is from the solvent peak of what you use to dilute your sample in. It shouldn't happen at the peak you're analyzing, though. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> so to process the scan, we're going to add in the retention time of each peak. This is the time it took to get to the top of its peak. You left click and add component. You want to do this for each one there's a peak. When all the retention times are added, you can print the scan. You go to File, and then Print. And it'll print. <laughs> so this is what it should look like when the scans are complete. If you'd like to make it bigger, or get rid of one of the detectors, you can do this in the computer. Thank you so much for watching the video, and please stay tuned for the other videos coming soon.